Welcome to Slow Living. My name is Esther and I try to sew stuff that supports a slow lifestyle. I recently added a new toy to my sewing room, so I thought I would introduce you to it. It's my Epson projector for sewing. Let's get rid of this mess first so that I can show you how to set it up. I hadn't heard of using projectors for sewing until recently, and now I'm really reluctant to sew any other way. I'm just a beginner myself, but I thought I would share how I set up my projector, which is an Epson Ultra Short Throw connected to my Mac laptop with a USB cord. So I thought that I would make this video for anyone who was thinking about getting a projector for sewing or for those who are just wondering how a projector would work for sewing. There are different projectors that you can use, so I would recommend going to Daily's YouTube channel and blog, as well as the Facebook group called Projectors for Sewing, because there's so much more information about all the different types you can use, and more in-depth information if you get stuck. Just quickly, sewing patterns are templates that we use to cut out fabric when we're sewing something. I feel like if you're new to sewing, it can be confusing hearing the term sewing pattern because when I think of the word pattern, I think of shapes and prints on clothing or fabric, like a cute floral pattern, but that's not the kind of pattern that we're talking about. When I'm talking about a sewing pattern, it's usually a paper template that we use to cut out the pieces needed for the garment. So for example, a t-shirt will have its own sewing pattern and jeans will have have a different pattern. That also means that every single size of a garment has a different sewing pattern because the measurements will be slightly different. And this brings us to the huge benefits of using a projector instead of paper. Instead of having to cut out a paper pattern first, which usually involves piecing together lots of pieces of paper since patterns are usually larger than A4, then cutting the fabric, you can just project the pattern straight onto the fabric and start cutting. You can quickly project any size and even cut in between sizes since you can project two or more sizes at once. That means you can also do quick alterations on the go, for example, making the length a little bit longer, or if you're using a printed fabric, you can see exactly where you want to cut so that you can pattern match. The other huge benefit is not having to keep and store paper patterns. Instead, they're just digital files that you can keep forever. And of course, no paper means a lot less waste. This is the amount of waste that I had, and this was only from using a handful of small children's patterns, let alone if I was sewing something larger for myself. So if I have convinced you that getting a projector for sewing is a good idea, let's move on to how to set one up. The projector should have a power cord, a USB cord, perhaps a remote, and mine luckily came with a stand. Otherwise, you'll need something to prop the projector up on. It could be a shelf or a stack of books, something stable and level. You can turn the projector on so that you can see approximately how high you need to set it up. The very first time you connect your computer to the projector, you'll need to download the software specifically for the projector that you have. When I connected the projector to my Mac for the first time, it prompted me to download the necessary software, so follow those prompts from your Mac. The projector should mirror whatever is on your Mac screen, and to check that it's projecting the correct measurements, we need to use this squares and rectangles file and make any necessary adjustments. This is called calibrating. I will link this exact file in the description below, thanks to Sasha Soest, who's made it available on Google Drive for free. And you will need to download Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is also free, so that you can view this in PDF. It is extremely important to calibrate the projector to be as accurate as possible, because if, for example, the sewing pattern should be 10 centimeters, but the projection is only seven centimeters, you're going to end up with a much smaller garment than you intended. If it's not calibrated well, you could also end up with one side being longer than the other, or just the entire garment looking wrong. The best place to start is by using a cutting mat or a right angle ruler to check that the projected squares have right angles, that is 90 degrees. Don't worry about how big or small the squares and rectangles are just yet, we're going to focus on getting the right angles 90 degrees first. If they are not right angles, it's likely the projector is on an uneven table or floor causing the projection to be skewed. So physically moving the projector is the best way to try and get those 90 degree angles accurate. There's a really great adjustment guide, again by Sasha Soest, that shows some of the calibrating issues that you might come across and how to fix them. So I will link that in the description below as well. And thanks very much to Sasha Soest. 
I found that my stand caused my projector to angle downwards too much, so the easiest way for me was to prop a random piece of timber and a piece of cardboard in behind the projector, which completely fixed my problem. So remember that your projector can go forwards and backwards, left and right, and it can tilt up and down. So all of those things can be adjusted physically to try and get that 90 degree angle correct. When we have right angles, then we can start to adjust the size of those squares because we need the squares to measure what they're labeled. So eight by eight or 12 by 12 and so on. Using the same squares and rectangles file open in Adobe, we want to view the file in full screen mode, which on Mac is Command L. So we'll use Command L to come in and out of full screen mode, which is important to remember because we're going to adjust our zoom settings and we're going to be going in and out of full screen mode a lot. I'm going to measure my squares and let's say they were too small, I would come out of full screen mode using Control L and change the zoom setting to something smaller. We need to change the zoom setting as many times as we need to until the squares measure accurately. My zoom setting ended up being 12.7, a very random number. So now every time I want to use my projector, I know to adjust the zoom to 12.7, provided I haven't moved the projector at all. Now with the calibration all done, all you have to do is open up your sewing pattern file in Adobe, make sure that your zoom is set to your own magic number, and then you can deselect any sizes that you don't want to show by clicking on the little boxes on the left under the layers tab. Then you can enter into full screen mode, control L, and you might even have a calibration tool within your sewing file that you can double check that the measurements are accurate before you start cutting your fabric. I know it seems like there was a lot to do to get the projector set up, but you only need to do that once provided you don't move the projector. If you move it, it will change the projection and you will need to recalibrate. But if you set your projector and leave it, don't touch it, don't nudge it, don't let anything shake it. You can use all the same settings, like I said, remembering that magic number, that zoom number, mine was 12.7. And every time I use my projector, I just log in, I log in. And every time I use my projector, I just change the zoom setting to 12.7. I do a quick check, but I know that everything is pretty much lined up and ready to go. I hope that this help, <laughs> I hope that this help. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I have a bunch of sewing tutorials on my channel, so go and check those out if you would like to do any mending or alterations to your clothing. It's such a great way to take care of your clothing, to buy less clothing, and just stuff overall if we learn to take care and mend our things. I have new videos coming out every week, so do subscribe if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and if you use a projector yourself, Yourself. I would like to know if you have any tips that you can share with me and if you get stuck leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you. If you have any ideas for projects that I can do in the future that would help you leave those in the comments too and you can find me on Instagram at slow living that's slow with an e. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!